Okay, guys, good morning. Um, Tuesday here, and um, first thing, really quick, um, if you notice on the agenda, this week extends to Tuesday evening of next week. Technically, most of the stuff is due Wednesday of next week, and that is because we're going to provide you an additional Castle Learning assignment that is the unit quiz, okay? So we have the normal week, and then basically Monday and Tuesday of next week, I'm not providing any new instruction. Um, I would like you to use that time to finish up any missing work for this unit and finish up the quiz. So really quick, let's talk about station models. And the first thing I want to mention is most of this information is right here in your reference table. Now, there's only a few portions of creating a station model that are um, require some work and that is over here the barometric pressure and the barometric pressure trend okay so these two items up here you actually need to do a little bit of work now your barometric pressure we calculated the pressure in inches of mercury so on your data table you have these values here what you need to do when you create your station model is you need to convert them so say you had 29 inches of mercury you're gonna follow it over here and you're gonna count you're gonna convert it to this left hand side which is really in millibars now it's nice and easy when we go from inches of mercury to millibars because each one of these go up or down by one unit so 29 inches of mercury if we follow it over here is this line so 980 is here 981 this would be 982 millibars now the nice thing about um, creating these station models with your barometric pressure here sorry for the delay there I had a, a ant crawling on my leg <laughs> to be honest um, is you're just gonna drop the first number or the first two numbers basically just take the last three numbers okay so if I did this conversion went from 29 and I did and I calculated it's 982.0 very important that you keep the point zero what we do is we just drop the first number or the first two numbers remember that when we converted from uh, to a station model, we added the 9 or the 10. In this case, we're just going to drop it. So you're always going to take the last three numbers. So in this case, I would put 820 as my barometric pressure. Okay. Now, the rest of the stuff, temperature here, visibility, present weather, dew point, wind speed and direction, precipitation, all of this information is straightforward. You just need to make sure you place it in the correct location um, when you're doing any sort of drawings. Present weather is down here. Um, this is a good example of that. Remember last week we talked about air masses in front, so we're going to kind of put that on the back burner for now. And uh, just remember that winds are in knots, and the direction that the tail is pointing is the direction that the wind is coming from. Remember that winds are labeled based on the direction they're coming from. Southwest wind is coming from the southwest blowing towards the northeast. So station models essentially represent all of the conditions in a single location. Basic circle with a tail. For cloud coverage, what I want you folks to do is just use 25, 50, 75, or 100. Don't worry about what happens in between. Okay, so you have 10% cloud coverage for that day for your data. Just either, just consider that clear. Basically round up or down, okay? Because we're not going to do anything um, above quarters, all right? So what I mean is 25% is one quarter, 50 is two, is, you know, half, three quarters, or one. Remember that winds go from high to low pressure, so it helps if you draw an arrow through the tail to represent the direction the wind is blowing towards, but remember we don't label that wind as that direction. We always label it in the direction it's coming from. So in this case, we would say it's a south wind, but it's blowing towards the north. Example down here, we would call this wind a southeast wind, but it is blowing towards the northwest. 
Now for knots, um, a small feather is five knots and a full feather is ten knots. Now one key here is if you have a full feather, um, it will be ten knots. You won't see two half feathers to represent ten knots. So what do I mean by this? I mean say that there was an example here that represented fifteen knots like this. They're not going to have three small feathers because this looks close to thirty knots. Okay, so you'll always see, you'll never see more than one half feather is what I, I'm trying to get at here. For example, here 25 knots, this is not five half feathers, this is a half right here, and then we have two fulls, so this would be 25. Now remember that we converted air pressure, I'm not going to spend time on this, please review the past video, um, but essentially for converting two station models, it's a little easier. Um, you're always just going to take these last three numbers. Okay, so if it's a five digit or a four digit number, forget about what's in front. Just take the last three numbers and drop the decimal point. Okay, so for this station model, we would put 896 as the air pressure up here. If it was this station model, we put 196, and that's the example we see all the way up here. Don't worry about this air practice page 20 that was for in class. Now the last thing that's a little tricky, as I mentioned, is the trend. Now the nice part about this trend is you guys aren't going to actually be putting this in your lab this week. And that is because we didn't calculate or did, we didn't record the trend. So don't worry about having this blank for your lab. Um, this is more important for the questions you're going to do. And just like before, this tells us what the increase has been over the last three hours. Now, we need to move the decimal. So it hasn't increased 19 millibars. It actually increased only 1.9 millibars. Again, a positive means there was a rise. A negative means there was a decrease. Remember that if pressure is increasing, weather gets nicer. If pressure is decreasing, it tends to get rainy, cloudy, um, and a little crummy out. A couple other things we have on the bottom right, precipitation, that's the amount of precipitation in the last six hours. Top left is temperature, and that's in degrees Fahrenheit. Middle left, you have present weather, this would be snow. And visibility is in miles, so a half mile, we can see a half mile, and it's snowing. And the last thing I wanted to mention is remember that the dew point down here on the bottom left, the closer this number is to this top number, the higher the relative humidity and greater the chance of precipitation. So if we think back, the last slide said the temperature was 28 degrees Fahrenheit. The dew point is 27. Remember the difference between these two is really important. The closer they are together, the greater the chance of precipitation. And if we notice, we have 100% cloud coverage. And that is probably because this air temperature is very close to the dew point. Therefore, more clouds, greater chance of precipitation. So in closure, um, you can write out a few sentences, and some of the solutions are right here. But let's talk about it. I'm just going to start from the top left. Air temperature is 28 degrees Fahrenheit. I can see... The visibility is one half of a mile, and it's snowing out. Dew point is 27 degrees. The winds are from the southwest at 15 knots. Cloud coverage is 75%. Barometric pressure. We see 196. Now we have to think back. Well, this is not in millibars. This is just a simple station model. So we have to add a 9 or a 10. This is less than 500, which means we add a 10 in front. So I would put a 10 in front here, and I would move the decimal one point place. So the air pressure is actually 1019.6 point six millibars that's a pretty high air pressure okay um, so that's the air pressure and if we notice it's increased 
1.9. Remember, we moved the decimal. In both of these cases here, we moved the decimal one place. So the pressure is increasing or has increased 1.9 millibars. And the last thing is it has rained a quarter of an inch or 0.25 inches. So that's all the information I can gain from this. Basically, if we look at a weather map, we can see all of this information on one little circle. We don't have to read the five, six sentences. This is what it would look like if you had to write all of it out. That's a lot of information to try and put over every city on the U.S. map. So it's much easier for them to just do a station model for each one. Um, here's kind of an example of what that would look like. Um, give me one second. I have a child crawling on me. James, can you wait a minute, please? And here's an example of that. This may be a little overwhelming right now. Um, let's open an image in a new tab here. This is a lot of information. This doesn't even include present weather. Uh, a couple places right here, these two lines are fog. Um, but that's a lot going on. But we can kind of see that most of the wind in this direction is blowing towards the north west and in here is blowing towards the southeast and it kind of shows this trend moving in a counterclockwise position here okay so that would rec that would um, probably lead to what we would think to be a low pressure system here low pressure system and if we see here 829 that's above 500 so that's 982.9 millibars remember if we're in the 900s that tends to be lower pressure and if we're in the thousands that tends to be a higher pressure system um, so that is the summary of the notes okay please reach out if you have any questions and just remember that this week extends until uh, Tuesday at midnight so basically Wednesday of next week um, we will be restarting our new unit, which is our last one, and that is astronomy.